opposition side the idea that when you come to a foreign country to immigrate into this country, you have to accept all their values and you have to give up your own ideas about how you lead your life because um, apparently they think that integration into a free society is only possible if you try to cut off most of your culture and most of your practices just to be as, as, uh, as similar to those who live already in this country. We also, I believe, that's not how integration works. This is not a realistic depiction of what we are seeing right now. I'd like to summate this debate along three lines. First, I will talk about how actually integration works. Then I will discuss why culture is necessary to be accepted if we want to have integration. And lastly, why there are freedoms of the individual which cannot be overruled by the state. First idea. Um, now, they say that the problem is that immigrants group together. They practice their own culture. We have from the first proposition that apparently it's a problem if people buy food in their own supermarkets, if they buy their local food they're used to, and not the average German food. Well, we believe this is ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen. We live in a free society where everyone can choose what he wants to eat, who he wants to associate with, and we say no reason why we should say that this is a better lifestyle than any other lifestyle. Well, we say that when you talk about the duties of an immigrant, it is not that they adapt all of our culture, but they, that they become functioning members of society. They, this comes to things like um, paying their taxes, earning a living, and speaking the language um, of the host country. We believe this has nothing to do with all other choices they make in their lives. That you may say that to a certain extent it is beneficial if people talk to, let's say, the Germans who live here. Well, we accept that this is, uh, this is so. But the problem with your motion is that just by moving people into other parts of the city, you have no guarantee that this will happen. Ladies and gentlemen, when people feel very attached to their culture, when they feel because of their traditional values that they, as women, for example, should not tell to men of another culture, or should not talk to men in general, or that other women of Western liberal democratic lifestyle that are not um, as reserved in their behavior um, represent something that is immoral, then they will not talk to these people, and then we will have no guarantee that they um, actually mingle. We also have no guarantee that people um, who are um, who are in a situation that they are in one uh, of their kind uh, surrounded by many others of, of um, the host nation will actually um, not feel threatened. We believe they will feel threatened because when we as a state move them to another place, when we separate them from all their cultural links, they will have even more the need to, um, to get back to their old friends and therefore even travel huge distances just to be with them and not talk to um, well, the natives in, in the host countries. Yes, sir. Can you explain to me why the government should simply accept that because of this segregation, the kids of migrants have an 80% less chance of going to college and leading a meaningful life in terms of socioeconomic status? Uh, we're not saying that this is something good. What we tell you is that there are other means of targeting this. We tell you that when it is um, one Muslim child in a, in a primary school full of Germans who have absolutely no problem with that everyone goes to swimming class, then this will just not be an issue for this group. They will just forget that this child doesn't come um, because it's not a problem that this primary teacher is actually aware of. Whereas if we have a situation where something like 20 to 30 percent of the children have this problem, then we as the state can send specially trained teachers to this region and therefore make sure that this property is actually discussed, that it's not swept under the carpet and nobody wonders where the immigrants are. But if there's some, a considerable percentage of the population, then people will notice and then we as the state can tackle the issue. My, my next, second point, the of question of individualism and culture. We on our side believe that culture is something important. People are, feel very attached to their culture and therefore it becomes a problem when we as a state say, well, this culture is dangerous for integration and therefore detrimental to society. But this is exactly something this proposition is doing. They tell you, as an immigrant, that well, your culture is bad. 
you can't have damages the way you can function as a member of the society. And therefore, we try to separate you from those who can, you know, with whom you can practice this contract. We believe that this will lead to your backlash. And immigrants will even be more hostile to our way of life. And therefore, the idea that, well, just because they meet each other, they will be more friendly to each other is wrong. When people feel that um, their way of life should somehow be submerged under the standard and general way of life, they feel that they have um, the special need to protect their identity, and this will make integration less likely. No, but my last question, the question about the individual's freedom. We heard from first opposition that um, when people make choices what they want to do, there is no, no general standard of what choices they should make. It is an autonomous decision of the individual whether they prefer to have this or this. Whether they say, I will sacrifice some chances for my career and um, not talk to well, the children of CEOs and that because I prefer to live with those of my kind who believe this is a legitimate choice. Sir. But furthermore, we ask ourselves, can the state actually say, well, this is something you should do? Um, you tell us that the state can say, um, you have to learn a language. Well, we believe this is okay, but this has nothing to do with the fact that I'm telling those people, let them um, to, to live in another part of the city. Um, we believe that um, the state can only ask for things that are directly related to the thing that is required. Language is something that is required, therefore language courses are fine. But living in some part of the city does not mean that you are unable to learn the language, that you are unable to function as a member of society, and unable to pay tax. And therefore we believe that um, this is not legitimate and justified to force people to change the, way, the place where they live. And especially because we as our states have recognized that um, the freedom to choose your own home and the integrity of this home is very, very important. We believe that um, this infringement upon your basic rights is not justified. You are telling us that it is beneficial for people to move into another part of the city. Well, we say just because something is beneficial, this is not enough for people to force actually to live in another part of the city. Ladies and gentlemen, I've told you that this model will not lead to more immigrant integration because immigrants need a stable surrounding. Furthermore, we cannot overrule that culture, but we have to accept it to a certain extent. And lastly, the individual has freedom. Freedom, we want to oppose, therefore we beg to oppose.